This webinar is brought to you by Lyme Disease UK. We hope that by viewing it, it will raise your awareness of Lyme disease, give you the knowledge of how you can prevent it, and also what steps you should take if you are bitten by a tick. Lyme disease is caused by a corkscrew-shaped bacteria called Borrelia and is transmitted via a tick bite from an infected tick. Not all ticks carry the bacteria that cause Lyme disease. Ticks are also able to carry other infections such as anaplasma and babesia. Ticks are members of the arachnid family and can be as small as a poppy seed and very difficult to spot. Lyme disease can be an insidious illness if not diagnosed and treated promptly and can cause problems with the joints, heart and nervous system. This graphic shows how tiny ticks can be at the different stages of their life cycle compared to a five pence piece. Many people get bitten by ticks when they are at the nymph stage, which makes them very difficult to spot. Once a tick attaches to you, it will feed on your blood. They can become as big as a baked bean before fully fed and they will then drop off. This graphic again shows just how tiny an embedded tick can be. This photograph is of a very small child and the photograph has been enlarged many times. Ticks love to attach to warm places on the body, for example behind knees, armpits and groins. It is also very important to check beneath the hairline and behind the ears. This is very important when checking children for ticks. Ticks are now endemic throughout the UK and can be found in woodland, heathland and parkland but have also been found in urban parks and gardens. You can get a tick bite at any time of the year, but they are more prevalent in early spring and summer. Recent research showed that the highlands of Scotland, southeast and southwest of England, and also East Anglia have a high risk of tick bites. It is essential that if at all possible you take measures to prevent a tick bite, thus preventing the possibility of Lyme disease. You can take the following preventative measures. Use an insect repellent and consider treating outdoor clothing, especially if you are doing activities like camping. Wear long trousers and long sleeves rather than shorts and t-shirt when out and about in the countryside. Tuck your trousers into your socks. Stick to pathways and avoid long grass as ticks like to sit in long grass and wait for a meal to go by. Do a thorough tick check and check one another, particularly if you have children, and have a shower when you get home. Get tick prevention advice about protecting your pets from ticks from your vet and check your pets regularly for ticks. It is really important that you know how to remove a tick correctly. Never pull off a tick with your fingers, normal tweezers or any other tool not designed for the job. Never ever smother the tick in oil or Vaseline. Carefully remove it using a tick remover or a pair of very fine nose tweezers ensuring all parts of the tick are removed. If you save the tick in a sealed bag it can be tested for infections. There is no minimum time a tick needs to be attached to pass an infection, however do remove it as soon as possible. Lyme disease can be very hard to diagnose as tick bites are easily missed and are not normally itchy or painful. The most obvious sign of a Lyme infection is the classic bullseye rash shown below. It is also good to note that the rash can be a solid rash rather than the typical ringed rash in the picture. Other symptoms to look out for are summer flu, headaches, fatigue, swollen glands, joint pain and in children sometimes behavioural changes. A blood test cannot rule out Lyme disease as testing currently used in the UK can produce false negative results for various reasons. There are currently no NHS Lyme disease specialists in the UK. Early treatment provides the best chance of a complete recovery from Lyme disease. An EM or bullseye rash is diagnostic of Lyme disease in itself and treatment should be started immediately 
without the need for a blood test. Your GP will be able to advise on the best antibiotics for you. Doxycycline is commonly prescribed for adults and amoxicillin for children. The amount of antibiotic prescribed for a child is based on their age and weight. The NICE guideline for treating Lyme disease, which was published in 2018, now allows for two courses of two different types of antibiotics should a person still be symptomatic after their first course. There is currently no test that can say a person is cured from Lyme disease. The resources listed below were used to compile this webinar and are useful reading if you would like further information on Lyme disease. The resources listed below were used to compile this webinar and are useful reading if you would like to find more information about Lyme disease.